My husband hid financial support to his ex-girlfriend for three years. I also found emotional letters my husband wrote to his ex after we married. But the full story was more complicated than I imagined. I, 28F, recently discovered that my husband Raymond, 32M, has been secretly supporting his ex-girlfriend financially for years. We've been married for five years and have a three-year-old daughter, Emma. This revelation has completely upended my life and everything I thought I knew about our relationship. Raymond and I met during our sophomore year of college. We were both studying business, and we hit it off immediately. We started dating after a few months of being friends, and things moved quickly from there. Raymond was always the romantic type, he'd surprise me with flowers, plan elaborate dates, and was always there to support me through tough times. We dated for two years before getting engaged. Raymond proposed on a weekend trip to the beach, and it was perfect. We got married a year later in a small ceremony with just our close friends and family. Everything seemed perfect, and I thought we had a solid foundation for our life together. After we got married, we both landed good jobs in our field. We worked hard and saved up to buy our first home. When I got pregnant with Emma two years into our marriage, we were overjoyed. Raymond was so excited to become a father, and he was incredibly supportive throughout my pregnancy. Our life seemed ideal. We had good jobs, a beautiful home, a healthy daughter, and what I thought was a strong, loving relationship. We rarely fought, and when we did, we always made an effort to communicate and resolve our issues. We shared everything, our hopes, dreams, fears, and finances. Or so I thought. Last week, I was using Raymond's laptop to check our joint bank account. We've always been open about our finances, so I didn't think twice about using his computer. As I was looking through our recent transactions, I noticed some strange recurring payments. There were monthly transfers of $1,000 to an account I didn't recognize. At first, I thought it might be some kind of business expense or investment that Raymond had forgotten to mention. But as I looked closer, I realized these payments had been going on for over three years, starting just a few months after we got married. I waited until Emma was in bed that night before confronting Raymond about it. When I asked him about the payments, he initially tried to brush it off as a business expense. But I could tell he was nervous, and I pressed him for more details. After some back and forth, he finally admitted the truth. The money was going to his ex-girlfriend, Zoe, 31F. Raymond had dated Zoe for about a year before we met. He had never talked much about her, just saying that they had grown apart and the breakup had been mutual. I never pushed for more details because I didn't think it was important. Raymond explained that Zoe had fallen on hard times after losing her job. She had reached out to him for help, saying she was struggling to make ends meet and was at risk of losing her apartment. Raymond said he felt guilty because their breakup had been messier than he'd let on. Apparently, he had broken up with her rather abruptly when he realized he didn't see a future with her, and she had taken it hard. He claimed that he only intended to help her out temporarily until she got back on her feet. But one month turned into two, then three, and before he knew it, years had passed. He said he kept meaning to tell me about it but never found the right time, and the longer it went on, the harder it became to bring it up. I was stunned. I couldn't believe Raymond had been keeping this secret from me for so long. We've always prided ourselves on our open communication, and this felt like a massive betrayal. The fact that it was his ex-girlfriend made it even worse. I couldn't help but wonder if there was more to their relationship than he was letting on. I asked Raymond why he felt the need to keep it a secret if it was truly innocent. He said he was afraid I would be upset or misunderstand the situation. He swore that there was nothing romantic between him and Zoe, and that he was just trying to help a friend in need. But I can't shake the feeling that there's more to this story. Why did he feel so obligated to help her? And why has it been going on for so long if it was supposed to be temporary? I'm also angry that Raymond has been spending our family's money without my knowledge or consent. That $1,000 a month could have gone towards Emma's education fund or paying off our mortgage faster. Instead, it's been going to his ex-girlfriend. I don't know how to move forward from this. I love Raymond and up until now, I thought we had a great marriage. But this has shaken my trust in him to its core. I'm worried about what other secrets he might be keeping from me. I've asked Raymond to stop the payments immediately, and he agreed. But he's also defending his actions, saying he was just trying to be a good person and help someone in need. He doesn't seem to understand why I'm so upset about it. He keeps saying that it wasn't about Zoe specifically, but about helping someone who needed it. But if that were true, why didn't he tell me about it? I'm considering asking Raymond to move out for a while so I can have some space to think things through. But I'm worried about how that might affect Emma. She's too young to understand what's happening, and I don't want to disrupt her life. She's very close to Raymond, and I know she would be confused and upset if he suddenly wasn't around. I've talked to my best friend, Lisa, about the situation. Lisa and I have been friends since high school, 
and she's always been my go-to person for advice. She thinks I should leave Raymond. She says he's been emotionally cheating on me and that I deserve better. But I'm not sure if I'm ready to give up on our marriage just yet. We've built a life together, and I still love him despite everything. I'm also thinking about reaching out to Zoe to get her side of the story. Part of me wants to know if there's more going on between her and Raymond, but another part is afraid of what I might find out. What if she tells me they've been seeing each other? Or what if she confirms Raymond's story and I feel guilty for doubting him? I feel lost and confused. I never thought I'd be in this situation, and I don't know what the right thing to do is. Should I try to work things out with Raymond? Should I leave him? How do I protect Emma through all of this? I keep thinking back to all the moments in our marriage that I thought were perfect. Our wedding day, when Raymond looked at me with tears in his eyes as we said our vows. The day Emma was born, and Raymond held her for the first time, promising to always protect her. All the little everyday moments, cooking dinner together, lazy Sunday mornings with Emma, supporting each other through work stress. Were all of these moments tainted by the secret he was keeping? I'm also struggling with my own self-doubt. Should I have seen signs of this? Were there red flags I missed? I've always prided myself on being observant and intuitive, but I never suspected anything like this. It makes me question my judgment and wonder what else I might have missed. The financial aspect of this is also causing me a lot of stress. I've always been careful with money, and the thought of $36,000 a year going to Raymond's ex-girlfriend makes me feel sick. That's money that could have made a real difference in our lives. We could have taken family vacations, started a college fund for Emma, or put it towards our retirement. Instead, it's gone to someone I didn't even know existed in our lives. I could really use some advice from people who might have been in similar situations. How do I rebuild trust after such a significant betrayal? Is it even possible? And how do I figure out if Raymond is telling me the whole truth? I want to believe him, but I'm finding it hard to trust anything he says right now. For now, I'm taking it one day at a time. I'm trying to keep things normal for Emma's sake, but it's hard. Every time I look at Raymond, I feel a mix of love, anger, and betrayal. I don't know what the future holds for us, but I know that things will never be the same. Update 1 Thank you all for your support and advice on my last post. The past two weeks have been intense, and I wanted to give you an update on the situation. After my initial post, I decided to take some time to think things through before making any drastic decisions. I asked Raymond to stay with his brother for a week so I could have some space to process everything. He was reluctant at first, saying he wanted to be there to work things out, but eventually agreed when I explained that I needed time to clear my head. During that week, I did a lot of soul-searching and tried to figure out what I wanted to do. I talked to my parents about the situation, which was difficult because they've always loved Raymond. My mom was sympathetic but cautioned me against making any hasty decisions. My dad was angry at Raymond and wanted me to leave him immediately. Their conflicting advice just made me feel more confused. I also decided to take some of your advice and reached out to Zoe. I know many of you warned me against it, but I felt like I needed to hear her side of the story. I managed to find Zoe on social media and sent her a message explaining who I was and asking if we could talk. To my surprise, she agreed to meet me for coffee. When I met Zoe at a local cafe, I was shocked. She wasn't at all what I had imagined. She was heavily pregnant, at least seven months along. As soon as I saw her, I felt sick. I immediately thought the worst, that Raymond was the father and this was why he had been supporting her all this time. But the truth turned out to be even more complicated. Zoe explained that she had been in an abusive relationship after breaking up with Raymond. Her ex had isolated her from her friends and family, controlled her finances, and eventually became physically abusive. When she finally managed to leave him, she found out she was pregnant. She had no job, no support system, and was terrified of her ex finding her. That's when she reached out to Raymond for help. She said she didn't know who else to turn to. Raymond, feeling guilty about how their relationship had ended and wanting to help her escape the abusive situation, agreed to support her financially until she could get back on her feet. Zoe swore to me that there was nothing romantic between her and Raymond. She said she saw him as a friend who had helped her when she had no one else to turn to. She also told me that Raymond had been encouraging her to tell me the truth for months, but she was afraid of losing the support she desperately needed. I left the meeting with Zoe feeling overwhelmed. On one hand, I was relieved that Raymond hadn't been lying about the nature of their relationship. On the other hand, I was angry that he had kept such a huge secret from me for so long. I was also feeling guilty for doubting him and for the resentment I had been feeling towards Zoe. When I got home, I called Raymond and asked him to come back. We had a long, emotional conversation where I told him about my meeting with Zoe. Raymond broke down and apologized profusely. He said he had wanted to tell me many times but was afraid of how I would react. He also admitted that he felt trapped in the situation and didn't know how to get out of it. 
Raymond explained more about his history with Zoe. They had dated in college, and their breakup had been messy. Raymond had broken up with Zoe abruptly when he realized he didn't see a future with her, and she had taken it very hard. She had become depressed and dropped out of college for a semester. Raymond had always felt guilty about how he handled the situation. When Zoe reached out to him years later, Raymond said he saw it as a chance to make amends for how he had treated her in the past. He never expected it to go on for so long, but every time he thought about stopping the payments, he would think about Zoe and her unborn child potentially ending up on the streets or back with her abusive ex. I'm still processing everything, but I've decided to give our marriage another chance. Raymond has agreed to go to couples counseling with me to work on our communication and rebuild trust. He's also promised to be completely transparent about his finances and any contact with Zoe going forward. We've also decided to continue supporting Zoe until the baby is born and she can get back on her feet. But this time, it's a decision we're making together. We're looking into legal ways to help her stay safe from her abusive ex and get the support she needs. This situation has made me realize that there were communication issues in our marriage that I hadn't been aware of. Raymond admitted that he's always had a hard time confronting difficult situations, preferring to avoid conflict. This tendency, combined with his guilt over Zoe, led to this whole mess. We're working on creating an environment where we both feel safe sharing difficult truths with each other. I know this isn't the resolution many of you were expecting or hoping for. But I believe Raymond's intentions were good, even if his execution was terribly misguided. We have a lot of work to do to rebuild our relationship, but I'm cautiously optimistic. The past two weeks have also made me reflect on my own attitudes and beliefs. I've realized that I had some unconscious biases about people who stay in abusive relationships or need financial help. Hearing Zoe's story has opened my eyes to how complex these situations can be. We've started attending couples counseling, and it's been eye-opening so far. Our counselor has helped us identify patterns in our communication that we need to work on. Raymond is learning to be more forthright with his feelings and concerns, while I'm working on creating a space where he feels safe to do so. As for Emma, we've decided not to tell her anything about the situation for now. She's too young to understand, and we don't want to burden her with adult problems. We're focusing on maintaining her routine and showering her with love and attention. I'm still having moments of doubt and anger. There are times when I look at Raymond and feel a surge of resentment for the secret he kept. But then I see him playing with Emma or making an effort to be more open with me, and I remember why I fell in love with him in the first place. Thank you all again for your support and advice. It really helped me navigate this difficult situation. I'll update again if there are any significant developments. Update 2 I want to start by thanking everyone who has been following my story and offering support. Your kind words and advice have been a lifeline during this challenging time. It's been three months since my last update, and a lot has changed. Raymond and I have been attending couples counseling regularly, and it's been eye-opening. We've uncovered a lot of communication issues that went beyond just the situation with Zoe. Raymond admitted that he's always had a hard time saying no to people and often takes on others' problems as his own. This tendency, combined with his guilt over how things ended with Zoe, led to the whole mess we found ourselves in. Our counselor has been helping us develop better communication strategies. We've been practicing active listening and learning how to express our needs and concerns more effectively. It's been challenging at times, but I can already see improvements in how we interact with each other. As for Zoe, she gave birth to a healthy baby boy about a month ago. Raymond and I visited her in the hospital, which was a surreal experience. Seeing the baby and realizing how close we came to this secret tearing our family apart was a wake-up call for both of us. We've been working with a lawyer to help Zoe get full custody of her son and a restraining order against her abusive ex. It's been a complicated process, but we're committed to seeing it through. We've also helped her find a job and a safe place to live. Zoe has been incredibly grateful for our help, and seeing her progress has helped me feel more positive about the whole situation. However, not everything has been smooth sailing. About a month ago, I discovered something that shook my trust in Raymond all over again. While going through some old boxes in our attic, I found letters that Raymond had written to Zoe but never sent. The letters were from the early days of our marriage, and they were filled with emotional confessions and what-ifs. Reading those letters was incredibly painful. Even though they were never sent, the fact that Raymond had written them at all made me question everything. When I confronted him about it, he broke down and admitted that he had struggled with lingering feelings for Zoe in the first year of our marriage. He swore that he had worked through those feelings long ago and that he was fully committed to me and our family now. This revelation has set us back in our progress. I find myself doubting Raymond's words and actions again. The counselor says it's normal to have setbacks in the healing process, but it's been tough. I've started individual therapy to work through my own feelings of insecurity and betrayal. Despite all this, I'm still committed to making our marriage work. 
Raymond has been patient and understanding, even when I have bad days where I can't stand to be around him. He's been completely transparent with his phone, emails, and finances, which has helped rebuild some trust. We've also made some big changes in our lives. Raymond has quit his high-stress job and is starting his own business, which will allow him to be home more with Emma and me. We've also decided to move to a new house in a different neighborhood, hoping for a fresh start. The process of house hunting and planning for Raymond's new business has actually been good for us. It's given us something positive to focus on and work towards together. We've been having a lot of conversations about our future and what we want for our family, which has helped us reconnect. As for Zoe, we're gradually reducing our financial support as she becomes more independent. She's grateful for our help but understands that we need to focus on our own family now. She's been making great progress in her new job and seems to be adjusting well to motherhood. Emma is doing well through all of this. She's too young to understand what's been going on, but she seems to sense that things have been tense. We've been making an extra effort to spend quality time with her and make sure she feels secure and loved. I know we still have a long road ahead of us. There are days when I wonder if I'm making the right choice by staying. But then I see Raymond playing with Emma or making an effort to be a better partner, and I remember why I fell in love with him in the first place. The journey of rebuilding trust is not linear. Some days I feel like we're making great progress, and other days it feels like we're back at square one. But we're both committed to putting in the work to heal our relationship. Thank you all for listening and for your continued support. I'll update again if there are any significant developments. Update 3 Hello everyone. It's been 6 months since my last update, and I wanted to share where things stand now. Raymond and I have continued with both couples and individual therapy. It's been a challenging journey, but we've made significant progress in rebuilding our relationship. The move to our new house has been good for us, it feels like a fresh start, away from the memories of all the turmoil. Our new home is in a quiet neighborhood with lots of young families. We've been making an effort to get to know our neighbors and become part of the community. It's been nice to have a fresh start where people don't know our history. Raymond's new business is doing well. He started a consulting firm that allows him to work from home most days. This change has been great for our family dynamics. He's been able to be much more present for Emma and me. He takes Emma to and from preschool most days and is always there for dinner and bedtime. This shift has allowed me to focus more on my career, and I recently got a promotion at work. The increased time together as a family has been healing. We've established new routines and traditions, like Sunday morning pancake breakfasts and family game nights. These simple activities have helped us reconnect and remember why we chose to build a life together. As for Zoe, she's doing well. She has full custody of her son, Jack, and has been thriving in her new job. We've gradually reduced our financial support, and she's now completely independent. While we still keep in touch occasionally, our contact is minimal and always transparent. Raymond always lets me know when he hears from her, which has gone a long way in rebuilding trust. The process of rebuilding trust has been slow, but steady. There are still moments when I find myself doubting or questioning things, but they're becoming less frequent. Raymond has been patient and understanding throughout it all, which has gone a long way in healing our relationship. We recently celebrated Emma's fourth birthday and seeing Raymond interact with her and our family and friends made me realize how far we've come. There was a genuine joy and ease between us that I hadn't felt in a long time. We were able to work together to plan her party and enjoy the day without any underlying tension. I won't say that everything is perfect. We still have our struggles and disagreements. But we've learned to communicate better, to be more honest with each other, and to face our problems together instead of hiding from them. We're both more aware of our own issues, Raymond's tendency to take on other people's problems, my struggle with trust, and we're actively working on them. One of the biggest changes has been in how we handle our finances. We now have complete transparency with all our accounts and major financial decisions are made together. We've also started setting aside money each month for charitable donations, which feels like a positive way to channel Raymond's desire to help others. Looking back, I'm glad I didn't make any hasty decisions when I first discovered Raymond's secret. While it's been a difficult journey, I believe we've come out stronger on the other side. We've both grown as individuals and as a couple. Our communication is better than it's ever been, and we've learned not to take each other for granted. That's not to say I don't still have moments of doubt or pain. The memory of those unsent letters still stings, and there are times when I wonder what would have happened if I had never discovered the payments to Zoe. But I'm trying to focus on the present and the future we're building together, rather than dwelling on the past. Emma has been flourishing through all of this. She's a happy, outgoing child who loves her preschool and has made lots of friends in our new neighborhood. Seeing her thrive reminds me every day why it was worth fighting for our family. Thank you all for your support throughout this journey. Your kind words and advice have been invaluable. 
While I hope I won't need to post any more updates, know that your support has made a real difference in my life.